All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. And finally, I think we have learned a very critical piece of information when it comes to growing figs underneath these low tunnels. And I'd like to share that with you guys today and talk it out. If you guys recall though, when I first presented this idea to all of you years ago, that is that this was a theoretical idea. We weren't really sure if this was going to work. And that the idea really is that by growing our figs underneath these tunnels, we can give them a really early head start, wake them up at an early date, give them a lot of soil temperatures, warm soil temperatures, and actually have the figs underneath these tunnels ripen two to four weeks earlier than if they were not underneath the tunnels. And I still think that's possible. Actually learning this, this really key critical piece of information, I think over the last few years, I've just been doing it wrong. <laughs> that's really crazy to say, because essentially what we had done every year is that we would cut the trees back to six to 12 inches. We would cover them with straw, and then we would cover them with tarps. And that was called the cut and cover method. But the cut and cover method, after not protecting any of my trees this year, and just pretty much doing an overall lazy <laughs> hardiness experiment, um, really I was just very busy, guys. But the point is, is that I saw the same exact things happen with the trees this year than they had in the prior years underneath these tunnels. And I had blamed actually a lot of the dieback that I saw last year. If you guys recall, I had COVID. And at the time I had COVID, I was not able to really get a close eye on these trees and really observe what was happening underneath this, these tunnels here. And I blamed actually for that entire season a really late start to the season because I blasted them with heat too much and that the temperatures underneath these tunnels, it got too warm and we actually fried the trees. Uh, that to me, I think is just not the case. Last year, the year before that, and I think we may have even been doing this a year even prior to that. I'm not, I'm not sure how long we've been doing this method for at this point, but whether this is the third season now or this is the fourth season, doesn't matter. The point is now is what I've learned is that actually the dieback that I saw with these trees and the reason why they were not waking up properly is because of the cold. The cold was killing them. Even through the cut and cover method, which I thought would be enough, uh, really is not enough of a, a, a level of protection in the cold in that really what needs to be done is I have to have a lot more mulch underneath the tarps. The basic level of straw that I've put down in the past, it really just has not been enough at all. Uh, to really insulate an area, you need lots of leaves, lots of straw, throw the tarps over top and keep the tarps airtight. That keeps the insulation trapped in that mulch and in that tarp. And that's really the only way this is gonna be possible. Regardless if you're doing a, um, you know, a cut and cover method where I cut the trees to six to 12 inches, or regardless if you're, you're doing instead some kind of limb bending, or if you're doing a low cordon method with, with your figs or a Japanese espalier, they have to be protected. They have to get through the winter time. Um, and then the trees need to be able to leaf out from that growth from last year, rather than having to send up a sucker from below the soil or somewhere else on the trunk of the tree. Uh, it's really critical to actually have the tree survive the winter. Once the tree survives the winter and you're not seeing any dieback, you can blast the heck out of these trees, I've learned. Um, I did that this year uh, after realizing that actually it is the cold that killed them. Let's blast them. And actually I'm seeing good results now. Um, by warming up the soil as we're supposed to, um, the trees are waking up. And not only are they waking up, but they are putting out lots of growth that is competing and even surpassing trees that well have um, leafed out on their own without any sort of assistance from a greenhouse. Uh, and I would argue they're further ahead in their development. So it's definitely a, 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 a guarantee at this point that when you get these trees woken up at an earlier date, we need to get them woken up a month earlier so if we want to have fruits that ripen a month earlier, we have to wake these trees up a month earlier. 
And the only way you're going to be able to do that, again, is by protecting them throughout the wintertime, guaranteeing their survival. What is a guarantee, as I said, is after they survive the winter, after they start to wake up, after they start to leaf out, that new growth, because of that excess soil temperatures that is provided from this greenhouse effect with the tunnel, it is an exponential amount of growth and production that you will then see from that point. That is an increase larger than a tree that receives no head start. And that's really what we're competing against here. Because the trees underneath these tunnels, that's the question. Can they beat out a tree like these trees over here that we have planted in the ground? Same style, but these were not pruned. They also were protected in some way. Of course, this tree wasn't wrapped but it has survived the winter. There is some winter damage here, but you can see the leaves now that it is May 10th. You can see it has formed some leaves. The Brabus have also formed. That's a nice little bonus that you can't really get by growing them underneath the tunnels because you have to cut the trees back so hard. So you're already at a disadvantage right there of foregoing the Brava crop. But if we can, for some reason, get not for some reason, if all that heat that we're predicting is going to really help the production, the timing of the crop, that's where the benefit's gonna be, is actually having a much earlier main crop. Yeah, we're gonna forget about the Brabus, but hopefully our main crop will ripen two to four weeks earlier. And that to me is enough to really make it worth uh, actually doing this every single year. And then of course, recommending this again to more of you guys. Uh, and this to me then, it makes sense that really the average grower can do something like this, uh, which I think has a really amazing benefit um, because people you know, in zone fives and maybe even zone fours could do something like this and actually be able to grow figs in, a actual, in a, and actually their length of their season, whereas otherwise they could not. So two weeks actually could be a big difference for uh, depending on the person. And uh, for me, that's where I'm kind of leaning here towards and, and looking at is that this still is a failure. In fact, we won't really have any sort of data this year on when the figs will ripen um, compared to that tree over there, uh, you know, pegging them against each other uh, because this is just for this year, it's already kind of broken at this point. Uh, we didn't get the potential, we did not realize the potential that we should see, and therefore it's not really a fair comparison. Of course I will be comparing just in general, but it's not really a fair comparison. What you'll see though underneath here, and I wanna show you guys a little bit of this, because this is what happens every single year if you don't protect them is that they will leaf out from a much lower point because the trees are damaged. And this takes a lot of time for them to leaf out like that at a lower height. In fact, a lot of this under here is dead. And that's typically what I had foreseen in the past was that thinking that the heat was blasting them and it wasn't the cold, I had assumed the cold did not kill them. Well, because I protected them. Right? I thought the protection was enough, but it turns out it wasn't. But as you can see, here's a... Uh, and there it is, leafing out down there. And all this growth up top is dead. So all this stuff, and it was even higher, I think, uh, before I cut them to put the tunnels over top. And all this stuff will die back very slowly. This is what I had a, thought was dying from excess of heat when in actuality it was the cold and then now we have growth down below that is forming and it will send up actually more suckers down here over time um, the base of this tree typically survives every year the closest growth to the ground and then what happens is this process of regrowing from the base is very slow uh, the growth that comes out from these growth tips here, guys, the growth that comes out from wood that has lived 
it leafs out quicker than growth that is forming from the, from the soil or below the soil. Here's another example. This is a campaneri tree that did not survive the winter. You can see again how tall that is. The camera just on the tripod flew off. But anyway, that is the new sucker and the new growth that's coming up from the base. The good news is, first off, the tree is not dead. It is putting out a few new shoots down there. And the good news is also potentially this is competing in where it should be with that other tree that we looked at that again was not protected, not pruned, but did survive the winter. Um, so that's what you have to happen. That's what has to happen. You have to get it through the winter time. That dieback will occur and this restarting process, it doesn't matter how much heat you give them. If they die in the winter time like that, the regrowth process takes a very long time, unfortunately. Um, so it's just not something you want to do. And so if we can avoid it, we should. And uh, that's kind of my little update here for this, this method. Uh, I'll update you guys. Obviously next year, we're gonna do this again. We're gonna figure out <laughs> exactly, hopefully, when these trees um, will actually ripen their fruits with this method. And uh, hopefully we can have something substantial there. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this one. You enjoyed this little series and stuff that I'm doing. Keep following along. We have a playlist that I created about the low tunnel figs. You can see that on the YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Uh, obviously I'll keep you guys updated and that's the best way to do so. So take care everybody. We'll see you soon.